Um, we asked how long we could do this for, and uh, is it Tim? Yeah, Tim all said, right. Tim said we could do two songs, <coughs> two, two songs lines. So I'm going to do uh, uh, Battle to Hell and Dark Side of the Moon. So strap in, it could be here for quite a while. Um, so Wigan, I don't know much about Wigan. Um, I live in Southport, but I did have my first date in Wigan. Um, which is a long way to come for a little blown wrinkly thing, isn't it, really? But, but at least we're still married. So, and George Formby came from Wigan, didn't he? Yeah, hell of a boxer. Great. So, um, yeah, my name is James. I, I do answer to Jim, uh, but my wife prefers Hamish, which is understandable because he's a lovely chap and very handy around the house. Um, because I can't do DIY, for obvious reasons. I'm lazy. <laughs> um, but I suppose we, we, we should really uh, talk about the, the issue that is staring you right in the face. I have got what some years would consider a disability. Others would call it an impairment, but I like to call it just what it is. I'm Scottish. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I have been Scottish a long time. I uh, have good days and bad days. I do bump into things a lot. Uh, I blame the alcohol for that, actually. <laughs> But uh, we get labelled as a, an aggressive nation, the Scots, don't we? Sometimes justifiably so. I mean, a few years ago, I saw a guy in a phone box in town, and he was headbutting the phone. And I thought, yeah, he's definitely Scottish. And he's definitely phone in Scotland, because that's the code. <laughs> but, uh, but what I'm obviously alluding to is the fact that I am indeed blind. Shocker. What gave, what gave it away? Yeah, um, I'm just, I only mention it just in case you're thinking... What a pretentious get. Wearing sunglasses indoors at night. It is night time, isn't it? It is hard to tell when you're in the coal bunker. So, uh, but the glasses do serve a medical purpose. I had a one night stand with a nurse and I don't want her to recognise me. But I have been accused of being pretentious. I did have a guy come up to you once in the bar and say, oh, do you think you're some kind of rock star? Do you think you're Stevie Wonder? And I thought, I can't be mistaken for Stevie Wonder, surely. I don't sing. I don't play piano, and it's pretty obvious to everybody here, I am not American. <laughs> but, uh, thank you. I, um, yeah, I have actually been, I've been asked a few times, are you really blind? And I just say, no, no, I'm just having a very long blink. <laughs> I, uh, I've actually been completely blind for nine years. And uh, I'm not looking for sympathy with it, even though I have never seen my little brother. Oh. That's okay, it's not a blind thing, I just don't have a little brother. Um, but there are worse, to me, there are worse things than being blind, and one of those is being deaf. And wouldn't you know it, lucky me, I'm also deaf. But to be fair, I've only been deaf two years, I'm just trying that one out to see if I like it. Um, but I, I try not to let the blind and deaf thing hold me back, so I still work. I, uh, I actually volunteer for the Royal National Institute of the Blind, the RNIB. And I said this at a gig recently, and somebody shouted, oh, the lifeboats. <laughs> Not me, that's the RNLI. But could you imagine if I worked for the RNLI, if you, you were in a storm, you fell overboard, and you're splashing about in 50-foot waves with your high-visibility life jacket, blowing your whistle and flashing your light and screaming for help at the top of your lungs. Trust me. I'm the last person you want looking for, you a dead blind guy. But to be fair, I do have a heightened sense of smell. So I could probably tell you were shitting yourself waiting to be rescued. <laughs> so um, I have actually accomplished the main part of my performance. I'm facing the right way. <laughs> Which, uh, you know, it's the minimum requirement I feel when you're doing this. Because generally when I'm on stage, I tend to drift to the right. And as a socialist, I find that a little bit disconcerting. <laughs> but uh, so as long as you're laughing and making some kind of noise, I know I'm facing forward. You're doing your bit for disability awareness. And I'll be coming around later on the buckets. Uh, not for a collection, just for the incontinent amongst you. <laughs> but say, oh, here's a bit of a heads up to the guys in here. When you're using the toilet and you're at the urinal, please whistle. Because if I come in and it's really quiet, there's a distinct possibility I will piss up your back. <laughs> Some toilets, you need to throw a double six to get to the toilets here, don't you? But say, and another bit of toilet etiquette, when you are dealing with a visually impaired person, it is okay, when I come into the toilet, it is okay to ask me, to ask me, if I need assistance to find the urinal or a cubicle. That's absolutely fine. What isn't acceptable is what happened in a club in Blackpool a few weeks ago. I came in and a guy at the urinal spotted me and he let go of his, I don't know, can I say the word? Well, no. <laughs> he let go of it and with the same hand grabbed my hand and pulled me over to the urinal beside him. 
If you do that, I will definitely piss up your back. <laughs> and that will ruin your Thursday night, not to mention your best coat. So um, I'm really sorry if I seem a bit like agitated and anxious. That's because I drove here tonight. Um, I, I, I don't feel half as bad as Kevin because he was in the passenger seat. But uh, I've got a stress ball. Luckily, my other ball's quite relaxed, so I think we're good to go. But um, I like I'm saying, I am married. Unlike Jim, Jim Berry, I've only been married 388 days today. Uh, nobody applauds that, do they? 43 years ago, an applaud. Um, yeah, but uh, she hates that I'm keeping count, but I'm just making sure she's still under warranty. But she is, she's lovely, my wife. We, we work together, we occasionally gig together, and uh, we do lots of things. We actually did a mindfulness course recently where you do uh, meditation, you get in touch with your inner soul. And we talked about our spirit animal. Have you heard this? Your spirit animal. You, it's, it, somebody tells you that you, you share the characteristics of an animal. And my wife reckons that my spirit animal is an owl. And I went, oh, is that because I'm wise and knowledgeable and you feel protected by me? And she says, no, it's because you don't move unless you want to eat or shit. You live in the dark, harsh, I think, that one. And she said, and you always forget people's names. And I said, well, what's forgetting people's names? What's that going to do with being an owl? She said, okay, do you remember uh, John and Hannah? And I said, who, who? <laughs> but she is lovely, my wife. Um, you know, she puts up with a lot. And recently we got some bad news. We have a little 12-year-old uh, Shih Tzu Corgi called Poppy. Lovely little dog. And recently she bit my auntie. And it was a vicious, vicious bite. And after a bit of discussion, we decided we had to have her put down. And it was really sad, because she was my favorite auntie, and I do miss her. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't win. <laughs> but uh, to try and cheer me up, my wife, uh, you know, she took us to the theater in Liverpool. And uh, she took me to see Riverdance. Um, and she said when we came out, she said, what did you think of that? I said, oh, honey, that was fantastic, absolutely great. Couldn't tell you about the, the, the dancing, but the guy playing the spoons all the way through was absolutely amazing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, she, she, uh, she does, she's fantastic. She's always encouraging me, my wife, to uh, live the dream, to do what makes you happy. So with that encouragement, I am now a successful writer. And I actually write fantasy porn for the visually impaired. And I write it in braille. And all my readers have told me it's the best thing they've come across. <laughs> <laughs> what an audience. Well, thank you very much. You've, uh, you've all been fantastic for listening. Um, remember, we're all individuals and we're all different. Don't label people or put them in boxes unless you're returning them to Amazon. So thanks for listening. My name's James. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.